let's just like be normal normal humans all right <clears throat> All right, good day, ladies and gentlemen. We have an extremely important Bitcoin and Ethereum market update for you guys. Messin woke me up literally in the middle of the night. He said, we got to take a look at Bitcoin. Uh, he, he said he's figured it out. He, he was screaming, yelling. I had to calm him down because, folks, uh, we believe there's some immensely important things to understand uh, with Bitcoin and Ethereum, there's been some concerning things happening with Bitcoin, uh, but there's some silver linings and some uh, potential uh, critical support levels uh, that we need to be aware of. So we've brought Messin on, a technical analysis expert, all the way from France to help break down what's going on. What's up, man? Why are your intro so like hyped like that every time? It's like <laughs> something just happened. But anyways, so I think the two 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 main things we can talk about right now. Okay. The biggest thing we need to actually um, uh, kind of be careful of, which is the speculation that's currently, you know, widely sp spread in the market, all the fear and everything, you know, everywhere you go. Now everybody's already talking about the altcoins and, you know, moving their money and this and this and that. But I think there's some things that we have to pay attention to. Um, you know, I have, I, I would say, you know, we both have some sort of, uh, um, I wouldn't say different ways, but like two scenarios that can actually possibly play out here. And, uh, you know, I, I'm still, you know, I'm, I still have some bullish um, uh, and bullish outlook on, on Bitcoin, even for the short term. Yes. And look, this is uh, very good that we're bringing this up now because I've been um, expressing my concern over what Bitcoin's doing uh, as of late, uh, because look, if we can briefly go over to my chart here, Bitcoin has fallen below the 50 SMA on the daily. The 50 SMA on the daily has been the most important support level for Bitcoin uh, this cycle. And if we zoom out to back in 2017, it was a very relevant support level as well. Kind of acted as the bedrock of support throughout the bull run as soon as we broke below it, marked the beginning of the bear market. So historically important support level this time, uh, at this cycle, uh, support, important support level as well. Twice we held it as support. And we've broken below it, uh, kind of forming a bit of a bear flag here. So I have been concerned. I have been expressing uh, my concern. Uh, but again, here, Messin has a, uh, a very interesting chart, chart here uh, that could, you know, uh, signal some potential uh, strength with Bitcoin. So why, why don't so, you go ahead and describe it? Yeah. So one thing, actually, even if we go back to your chart, yeah, yeah, right? Go, go ahead. So that's that's what the main market's been looking at. This uh, like kind of a, you know, bull or a rising wedge that we've been stuck in. And we just had a drop below it. And now there's looks like, you know, there's a lot of empty space behind it, below it. And it looks like, hey, just Bitcoin is absolutely crashing. Now, the main thing that I'm thinking, right, just that's all my own thoughts, so the simple moving average on the 50, um, uh, the 50 simple moving average on the daily chart sure was the, you know, was the driver or the, the support versus the resistance. And as soon as we broke below it, we stuck below it for like three years or whatever the case might be. But we also need to take into account that it was some like uh, there was a lot of different conditions. The patterns were, you know, the pattern structure was different than 2017. We have different support and resistance zones that are clearly identified. So overall, let's say if you zoom back, for example, maybe I'll just go to my chart here just to make it. Uh, yeah. So this is this is it. If you go back to 2017 over on this side, um, we'll look at it right, and within you know we started that crazy momentum sorry about that we started the crazy momentum somewhere you know november beginning of november december and then in november here if i go to the monthly chart right away a couple of things can be you know identified right off the bat which are extremely different than what we have today overall you know we go here bitcoin actually within a month went from the nine thousand dollars all the way to the you know twenty thousand dollars and dropped right after you know a very hard drop hammer candle on the monthly all the way down to the thirteen thousand within one month next month bear sentiment everybody saw the last month pretty bad now we're here and then boom we just went all the way down however if you look at the daily chart as well you know i don't want to extend this too long um but if we go back here when i look at this because everybody's forecasting a steep drop after your um, 50 EMA, uh, 50 moving average drop, you know, so as soon as we grab below here, go all the way down, everybody's overall, if you're looking at this steep uptrend, 
there was no clear support zones for you to actually look at. Nothing where you can be like, oh, well, Bitcoin can drop here or there. And even if we look at it, you know, this could be a support zone. Like based off price structure, you're saying? Ba exactly. Based off the trend, based off this. And this is a support zone, I would say. But nothing else where it's like it's, it's clear support for us to assume buyers have been coming in at this spot 100% for sure. So we can fall back down here. And that's why within a month, we have a huge uptrend and a straight downtrend right after. It was a pretty quick hype and no adoption, anything like that. However, this cycle is a lot different. And this cycle, clearly identifiable support and resistance zones. We know exactly where buyers would come in. There's no if. You know, even here, we have a zone where we know for a fact buyers will come in 100%. We know exactly we have a very nice, strong support somewhere on the 50K over here. And we know like overall here, even when we drop that heavy drop, I'll just remove this guy. If I zoom in a bit, when we drop, we found that support at this, you know, macro, I would say support line. So we got a lot of support and we got places where we can anticipate support to stem from. And I think here, even if we're looking at the daily, volume has been going down. So the downtrend has been subsiding. MACD's all the way in the bottom. Stochastic all the way in the bottom. Our size all the way in the bottom. We should expect a pullback soon, just like how we had before. This one over here, MACD in the bottom. Stochastic in the bottom. Our side in the bottom. You're saying uptrend. an uptrend. You're saying an uptrend. Yeah. Yes. Same thing over here. MACD's in the bottom. Stochastic in the bottom. Our side in the bottom. We're up there. This is where we recently over on the RSI. We're very oversold. Same thing here. Same exact conditions. I don't know why this is so different for everybody. Right. So, yeah, th this is very interesting. So, I think main takeaways here, you're pointing out how we have this trend line here, clear support. We have historical sideways price action where we could expect buyers to come in. And we're seeing that our indicators have kind of reset and we could uh, potentially anticipate uh, an uptrend. That That is very interesting. Uh, I do... I do agree with you with some extent. And also just to clarify my position, uh, the 50 SMA on the daily is not the end all be all. I think it's a significant factor uh, that's proven itself uh, both in the last cycle and this cycle to be a significant factor. But again, it's not the end all be all. Uh, we do have plenty of support uh, below us. Uh, and the great thing about this cycle is that we've been having pullbacks. We've been having these consolidation periods because what that gives us is support levels moving forward if and when we correct ultimately i think kind of the major support level we need to look out for is this previous peak here just above 50k because of a, of a few reasons here we can see every correction bitcoin has had this one was like a, a 31 percent correction this one was about a 25 this one was about a 19 percent. every time we corrected we made a higher low so if we were to make a lower low a macro lower low which we haven't yet this cycle and break below the key uh, fib level of the 236 drawn from these March lows to all time highs. Uh, if we were to break it below that fib level and make a new uh, lower low, I think, in my opinion, it's likely that we could retest uh, this 42K region and this 382 uh, Fibonacci uh, retracement. But we, we still haven't broken down that low. We still have not made a macro lower low. We're still above plenty of support. So, um, you know, it's not it's not the end all be all quite just yet. Bitcoin's just kind of uh, messing around uh, in this range here. Now, um, I think something significant we should also talk about is Bitcoin dominance. Dude, look at this. This is such a big deal. Did you expect Bitcoin dominance to fall down this quick, this fast? Definitely not. No, definitely not. Yeah. And look, for those who don't know, Bitcoin dominance is the total value of Bitcoin in comparison to the total value of all cryptocurrency. Whenever it rises, alts suffer. And whenever it falls, alts benefit. So, um, you know, me and Madison, we've been like debating behind the scenes. Like, let's say Bitcoin does fall. What will alts do? Because there's some reasons to think that alts will do well and some things uh, and some reasons to think that alts uh, could do bad. I think... Um, you know, if Bitcoin keeps falling, Bitcoin dominance will fall and the pairings with Bitcoin uh, affect the U.S. dollar value. So uh, I'm kind of torn about, uh, you know, the state of the altcoin market. What, what do you think? I think, you know, even you can notice it every time, you know, especially with VeChain, especially with, uh, like, I can't really pick right now, but there's a bunch of altcoins that have been pumping every time Bitcoin goes down. And we see that that's the go-to for a bunch of the, um, either the traders or the people that are actually just trying to invest in, you know, altcoin season, quote unquote. But um, definitely, I think there's a bunch of, you know, uh, a bunch of those altcoins that are actually going to go up uh, just because we you know looking same thing how we're looking back in 2017 
everyone's looking at Bitcoin dominance from 2017. If you're looking at Bitcoin's price action from 2017 and, you know, the all the indicators from back then, I don't see why the same thing will happen this season. But even before we get there, we need to understand that's just like you said, that support at the, you know, Bitcoin's $50,000 support. Once that gets broken, we head down to the mid 45s, you know, mid 45 range. I'm still not, I, I wouldn't say that worried yet. I still see this as a typical, you know, more than typical. I would say um, uh, right now, there's the drop that we're having is a bit more than like just a normal uh, drop that we had, which was catalyzed by a bunch of, you know, there was a bunch of things that actually caused that drop overall. So, um, you know, there's the Coinbase listing that happened. Everybody bought the news and then right away dumped as soon as that was done. Uh, everybody was kind of bullish on Bitcoin. Everybody, you know, thought they can make some money out of it. Then the hash rate drop, you know, the power outage in China also catalyzed more of a drop. There was a bunch of stuff that yeah. actually um, affected that. And now we're here. But just like you're saying, how everything, you know, with the altcoin uh, market, we're seeing that, yes. When Bitcoin drops, we're seeing other coins actually rise. I don't think everything is going to rise. I think people will pick favorites, which I think maybe that's something you can make a yeah. video about or something. But we know the favorites. We know what people are actually going to head to. And, uh, you know, there's some safe ones and there's some risky ones. But overall, it's pretty clear what's been the biggest movers when Bitcoin moves down. Yeah, look, and, and if Bitcoin, let's say it does start to break down, again, there is some hope for the altcoins because Bitcoin moves down, Bitcoin dominance will fall, and the pairings with Bitcoin, like Ethereum, Bitcoin, Chainlink, Bitcoin, all the pairings will be, uh, the altcoins will be positively affected. Uh, so, you know, when Bitcoin falls, it typically leads the market, typically takes the, you know, the market with it, but there's some reasons to think that it, it might not. Now, I know you were saying that we're starting to see some strength uh, build up on some of our time frames. But I also want to, you know, kind of uh, counter uh, provide a bit of a counterpoint here. I do see some concerning things still with our very macro indicators here. Man, like, look, if we look at the, at the weekly here, this weekly chart looks extremely concerning. The MACD is a histogram sticking down, might have a bearish crossover on the weekly in the over uh, over uh, bought territory. Uh, very concerning. Uh, weighted MACD on the way down, stochastic on the way down. RSI extremely overbought on the weekly making macro lower highs and lower lows so um you know we we still have to see uh how that translates um you know the the, the lower time frames are starting to show some signs of some strength for example the six hour here uh looks like we might want to have a bullish crossover in the six hour macd uh stochastic on the way up rsi starting to make higher highs and higher lows so you know it's it's not all doom and gloom we're starting to see some strength start to build up which is good uh but i still do see some very uh, concerning things on the macro time frames right so i think uh, overall even if you go back to the um uh, weekly chart here uh, a couple of things that we can also um uh, so for the next week or so right uh we would look like even at the macd for example the macd usually we'd catch the downtrend from the top meaning that if you don't i'll just uh, i can just control here the screen um overall you know if we zoom in maybe a bit we start looking at a downtrend. Where did this go? There we go. Perfect. So we start looking at a downtrend, right, from here. And if we're looking at the MACD, I hate when this happens. There we go. Boom. So if we're looking at the MACD, the MACD itself has been down ticking and we're almost halfway through the lost momentum from the sellers the buyers did will go all the way out up once we start having that crossover is when you're halfway through the train already kind of started right when so you know you want to ride the wave down usually even if we're trading this overall you start looking at MACD crossover and MACD um, uh, down ticking all the way from the top because selling starts to happen over all the way at the top here and once we're halfway through here, the train is like halfway through that trip towards the bottom side. So overall, you can see that 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 momentum, that selling momentum has been subsiding. And usually, you know, when MACD is going down, it does not mean that we are um, uh, uh, we can be going sideways as the MACD is going down. MACD is just showing us a lost momentum as opposed to just a drop. And we're that look at this for the past you know since since february we've been going sideways a bit you know it's not like uh we're in the same we're we're, we're range bound basically with uh, with bitcoin somewhere here 
you know, overall then between the bottom over here. And we know exactly how it is. The past, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten weeks, we've been kind of moving sideways. This is a pretty clear option. There's a sideways movement. And you can see that also reflected on the MACD itself. Sure, we're going to cross over soon, but does that mean that we are going to go down? I'm not sure because halfway through that, we're just moving sideways. What makes us think that the downward movement is going to get, um, I not continue to be sideways for a bit until bias pick it up. So, you know, just different perspectives, I guess, that we can take a look at this. But, you know, I guess we're here providing the good and the bad or the bullish and the bearish um, uh, speculation and in this video. Right. And also, look, the, the fundamentals for Bitcoin and crypto have never looked better. Uh, the technicals for Bitcoin and crypto are concerning. So uh, I think it's very important that we <laughs> clarify the difference between uh, fundamental and technical analysis. The things we've been describing, some of the bearish uh, things we're seeing here are based off technicals, not fundamentals, because some people seem to uh, maybe not understand the difference between the two. So we'll wrap it up here uh, with Bitcoin. We'll bring you guys an Ethereum update soon because uh, I'm looking forward to bragging about Ethereum and talking about uh, some very important uh, goings on uh, with Ethereum because we just made new multi mines. So make sure you stay tuned uh, for that video. That should be out soon. Do you have any uh, final words, man, with Bitcoin? No, that's right. All I want to say is just a couple of things. We need to do our own research 100%. Don't just follow the news and be smart. Yeah, look, folks, there's always FUD, but uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. And hit that bell icon to be notified of new uploads. Uh, become a VIP Discord member. You get access through our Patreon. You get more access to ourselves and uh, where we talk about low-cap gems and very helpful resources, that kind of thing. All right, I'm going to wrap it up here, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Peace.